We are so blessed. The blessed people call us blessed. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I, I think, I, and I can, you know, I sense this. People think they're, they're really searching in the wrong spot to see the victory. They're searching in the natural all over and going, well, you know, I, I wish God did that for me and, and all of that. And the reality is you're blessed in the spirit and it's then our responsibility to cooperate with the Lord and bring that into the natural. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Amplified says it, may blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. So it doesn't say you're going to be blessed. It says he has blessed you. So we could all very easily say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in Christ. Now, we, we know this, and we've talked about this before, but one of the statements and one of the declarations that the Lord had his children do in the Old Testament was we would declare this, I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the field, I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out, I'm blessed in my basket. Come on. People say, my basket, what does that mean? I don't know, whatever needs to be put in the basket and you got to carry it, you're blessed in it. I think the kneading bowl is in there. How many enjoy bread? Yeah, my bread is blessed. I'm so blessed, the blessed people call me blessed. Well, you're just a positive thinker. Well, yeah, I'm positive. The Lord said that I'm blessed. And therefore, I'm going to say what he said so I can have what he said. He said, I'm blessed. He said, I'm blessed. He said, you're blessed. It doesn't feel like, I know you little feeler. But if I can get you in faith and you can declare with me and with the Lord and say, the Lord's blessed me. You should drive down the road saying, I'm blessed. God's not cursing me. He's blessed me. Amen? Oh, it's so good. So good. Well, I want to start a new series. You guys want to put that title slide up? You can. Uh, this morning, I sent, uh, if you didn't get the wrap up on the anointing series, um, you can always go back to uh, um, uh or sign up for if you want all the information. I sent out via Flocknote, which is our, um, our uh, how we connect with you guys. Um, and you can sign up for that later on today if you want to. But I sent out an email with an overview of my notes and, and 29 passages, passages of scripture for you to study on the anointing in your own time. And so just go ahead and clear your schedule for the Lord. Cancel everything else you wanted to do and just spend time with him and he'll continue to establish within you That understanding of the anointing and that you carry that anointing and that you can walk in that anointing Now some of you need to stop putting an age limit on when that anointing will flow because it doesn't matter if you're Salt and pepper in your hair or you're as young as young can be if you'll fellowship with the Lord He'll speak to you. Amen, and he'll grow you and develop you so be, uh, uh, go ahead and get into that and study that out. But we're going to go into a new series, and um, it is up there. Okay, that's not up there, so I don't know if we have a technical difficulty or something, so I didn't know if it was up. But Hear His Voice is going to be the title of the new series. And uh, I want to deal with some things um, concerning kind of where we're at. Um, I want to share this. You know, sometimes... Uh, People have asked me, and I, I know I had a conversation this weekend about, you know, what the vision of the church is and stuff like that. And so we have some good friends uh, in the North Dakota, eastern part of Montana, uh, Breakforth Bible Church. And their, their whole uh, motto or vision is revealing a friend. That's what, they, that's what they say. Well, ours is Faith Family Church. It's life in Christ, right? It's life in Christ. Now, 
I believe that you can get too detailed with your vision and, and try to aim at everything and miss everything. You know what I mean? So I try to keep things narrowed down and focused. So when, when you think about life in Christ and when you think about like as far as our church is concerned specifically, um, there are a lot of things that change in the church world. Um, sometimes, and this is, this, is, this, will, this is not going to happen here, but one thing that never changes for us is the message. So this is a spirit-filled church. Like I'm not gonna stop preaching or teaching on or praying or, or, or ministering the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. It doesn't matter if, if, if that offends a visitor that comes and then they leave. It doesn't matter. That's, it's part of the message. The message cannot change. Now, the methods can change, but the message will never change. If we, you know, if we go to, if the Lord says down the road, and I'm not prophesying this, this isn't a prophetic word, so don't take it that way, but if the Lord says down the road, you know, uh, Tuesday nights is the night to have church. Do you know the Lord, that doesn't change the message? It's just a method, right? Does that make sense? And so what we have in our world today is a lot of voices, Oh, buddy, a lot of voices. And I'm going to deal with some, some stuff in this series that is going to, and today, this morning, is just groundwork. This is just information for you to, 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 to where we actually, then we'll get into the message more as it grows. But there are so many options today, not only naturally, including spiritually. And, and how many know this, that a lot of spiritual options out there, they're good options, God's moving in a lot of places right now. Did you know that? But did you know he planted you and birthed you or, and or planted you, one or the other, in Billings, Montana? He knew where you were going to be. He knew where the sole of your foot would tread. Do you know sometimes it's easier to give money to somebody who's going to go over to another country to a person you don't know and they're going to lead them to the Lord or you go over there and you lead them to the Lord and yet there's a greater fight to, to minister to your neighbor and your coworker. It shouldn't be that way. Amen? We want to hear what? His voice. So the vision for the church, and this is on the website, but the main scripture for our church is Ephesians 3, verse 17 through 19. Uh, again, the vision is life in Christ, Right? And, and Ephesians 3, verse 17 through 19 says this, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, the vision of the church, this is something that the Lord had said to me. I've shared it before, but I want to share it again. The vision that the Lord placed within my heart and, and Heidi, I mean, there's, there's things. I could go through uh, multiple dreams the Lord gave me, prophetic words the Lord gave us, multiple dreams Heidi's had. I'm talking about actual God dreams, not like I ate too much pizza the night before and, you know, and there was accidentally LSD in the pizza and I saw this, you know, fruit fruit colored rainbow no none of that stuff actually god speaking to me too much <laughs> sorry sometimes dreams have become they're very important in scripture but they become hyper spiritual now and people have told me sometimes you know through the years dreams that they had and i'm thinking man less biscuits and gravy before you go to bed there's no scriptural reference anywhere within that, and God is not taking you on a trip in a yellow submarine. <laughs> and all the young people didn't get that, but all the ones at a certain age, they did get that. <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the Lord had said to me, he said, he said, Sean, I was in a particular point in my life in ministry, and I was very frustrated. And so I lived, at a, I lived out uh, kind of near uh, Echo Canyon that way years ago. I had a house up there, and I was, I was very frustrated. And I'd been talking to Heidi a little bit about it because things didn't just seem to be going the way I wanted them to. 
or the way I thought the dreams and the prophetic words were supposed to be taking me, right, for the call. And I was, I went into, we had a basement in our house at that time, and I went in the basement, and I said, Lord, I'm mad. And I just told him. I mean, he, like he didn't know, right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I can see you down there, <laughs> you know. And I said, I'm mad. And I said, I don't understand what's going on. And this was late at night, and Heidi had already gone to bed. And I said, but I'm going to bed. That was my prayer. So I went to bed. Got up the next morning, because I love Jesus. I was just mad about my situation, right? Got up the next morning, got my devotion time, and the Holy Ghost showed up and spoke to me. And I said, and he said to me, he said, Sean, he said, you can quit and you'll make heaven. And I thought, well, good. I didn't lose my salvation. You know, just, <laughs> I mean, the Lord understands me very well. How many are so grateful he speaks to you in your language? You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, and it wasn't in King James English either. It was just, you know, <laughs> no saiths, nothing. He just spoke to me. And I, and I said, I said, Lord, and he said, Sean, you can quit and you'll make heaven. And then he said this, but if you, if you remain, if you stay, and you stay with me, he said, you'll make heaven a part of earth. And that is the vision. Now, that doesn't mean that the pastoral staff and those that are in this building are doing are making heaven a part of earth everywhere. It means that we're called to do our part and train, and you are to be filled with the fullness of God. With us, the glory of the Lord will cover the earth like the waters cover the seas, but how? A lot of times people are waiting for a sparkly cloud to show up, and the glory to come in, and angels to manifest everywhere. And that, that is happening in the spirit, but the vessels are you and me. And it is some of the, uh, it is some of the most demanding, strenuous work to instruct and try to lead believers into believing that that's what they're capable of. It's easier to believe that your favorite minister is anointed and you're not. This is why we must have the pastoral ministry. See, the goal is that you understand who you are and you whip the devil in your world. In every area. And in order to do that, you're going to have to be filled with the fullness of God. And I'm going to help you with something. It doesn't just happen automatically. There has to be an engagement with the Lord in your relationship with him. And you begin to allow him to change how you think. And that thinking is to come in line with the reality of who you are in Christ. And then you're going to have to enslave this body to his truth. And as you do, the anointing, the fullness of God continues to grow, to develop, to where you become a heavenly terrorist to the kingdom of darkness. He thinks he has sleeper cells. We are the sleep. We're not sleeping. We're the awake cell. Yeah. I don't know if we should put that on live stream. We might want to edit that out. All right. <laughs> this is a training camp to terrorize the kingdom of hell. Not just me, you. So we see a church where people come to know and experience God's love through life in Christ. Come to grow in relationship with God and, the ch and church family through life in Christ, which I found that's a tough one. Everybody loves relationship with God. It's getting along with each other. <laughs> Come on. I've noticed it's not much different than me and my siblings when we grew up. There's a reason why my dad followed us around sometimes with a wooden spoon in his hand. 
You know what I mean? But we want to get so good at loving each other that the world goes, I'm joining them. Yeah, yeah but you, you're, you're from an LGBTQ background, I know, but they actually love over there. I was looking for love and I couldn't find it. I thought it was in some of these things. Turns out it isn't, but those people accept me. They, they have open arms to bring me in and allow the gospel to transform them from the inside out. That's the purpose of the church. Amen. This is a place where people come to discover, develop, and serve through life in Christ, where they come to the place of sharing with others about the good life in Christ. That's the four points of the vision. That's it. Now, we could talk hundreds and thousands of methods, but the important thing is the message. And if you sit down and you really begin to think about what God's doing in your individual life, you actually, this is the vision corporately, but this vision right here should be the same within you individually. To where you're reaching out to those around you and you're beginning to impact them because of the good life that you've discovered in Christ. And I'm not talking about the problem-free life. I'm talking about the victory life, and if I'm going to have a victory, then I must be in a fight. And if, in, if, I, if, I, if I have armor on, it ain't easy sometimes, but the empowerment of Christ is within us. God has given us a vision. So I want to wrap up with this. These are our... And, and I'm going to share these things uh, that the Spirit of God has given me. Let's go to, uh, we're going to close here in just a, just a little bit, because I know we've had a full service, but, and I'm, my purpose here isn't to get into the full message. It's just to lay some groundwork this morning. John chapter 5. I want you to see something. John chapter 5, verse number 19, I believe. This is the goal with this series that I'm about to go into, part of it, I should say. I heard a minister say one time, this is the most significant message. He would say this every time he started a new series. This is the most significant message I've ever preached for this church. And I, and because I, 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 I've listened to him several times and he keeps saying it. And I, every time he says it, you can hear his congregation kind of laugh, you know, and it's a large church. And he said, I know I say that. But literally, it does feel like the most significant message. Every message that a preacher gets feels like the most significant message. It's like Jeremiah. I'm on fire on the inside. I don't even know how to explain it. But it's in me. It's like these words literally feel like they're in your bones. <laughs> I like it. All right. It's better than any drug I ever did. All right, so John chapter 5 Verse number 19 says this, and this is where we're going with this. Verse 19, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he what? Sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. The purpose of this message is to help us gain and, and look at our lives to adjust to our lives to what we saw Jesus do, which means I'm only doing what I see my father doing. I'm only doing what I see. So I need to what? Hear his voice. I'm only doing what he's doing. Let's go over to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50, if you're taking notes. 49 and 50. John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. Says this, Jesus said, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. 
So Jesus lived in such a way that he only said what he So for a believer, it would be like this. He only said what he heard. So what did we just read? We read two verses that cover saying and doing. Or we could say speaking and living. So each individual person's life, if they're only saying and doing whatever God says and does, I wonder if you'll be full with the fill, filled with the fullness of God. People say, well, I don't know if that's possible. It's actually commanded. And if there's a command, there's an enablement. <laughs> we, need to, we need to step out in faith here, okay? So just say this with me. Say, I have the ability with God's help, with God's ability to only say and only do what he's commanded me to do. Now, we have to think this way, right? Right? We need to be trained in a direction. So what I have seen is this as I've been in prayer. There are a few things that I've seen when I've been in prayer for the church, and I keep uh, the Lord keeps taking me back to a tree, to a river, and to a sword and a trowel. Now, those of you that know the word, we could go a lot of directions. But for this particular, and I'm talking about for this church and the direction we're going, a tree is where he's had me for a while. And this started a while back, but it started when my HOA decided that they were going to have all the trees trimmed in our neighborhood. That's when it started. And I, I, I was like, you know, because, you know, they're asking, you know, what should we spend the money on? You know, you got to vote and all that stuff. Anyway, so I'm thinking, well, that tree looks pretty good. I mean, there's not a lot of dead growth in the trees, none of that. But that wasn't the issue. The issue was overgrowth. Now, I'm going to share some things here with you, and I, these are things for you to take today and consider in prayer, all right? Because I'm going to get into some things that the Lord's dealing with me about that is going to really disrupt your, your red wagon. You know what I mean? It's going to, it's going to, and what I mean by that is it's going to disrupt, it's going to offend our natural thinking. But I'm not coming at you with, thus saith the Sean. This is not my opinion. I'm going to take you to chapter and verse and bring some truth forth that the Spirit of God has led me in that is going to help you. Now, this has not only been confirmed to me, but others, but then Dale also had a word about us being too busy. Overgrowth. And do you know that you can actually be overgrown in good things? It's easy to look at a tree and go, there's a dead limb, I better cut that off. But it's difficult to look at an alive limb and say, I need to cut that off. So he's dealing with overgrowth, right? So I look at our trees and I'm thinking, there's nothing wrong with them. But the, the guy who trims the trees, the arborist, is that, I think that's what they're called. But anyway, that guy, he looked at the tree and he sees problems. He sees things I don't see because I'm not a tree trimmer. Right? He sees potential danger for that tree and the healthy growth of that tree that I don't see because he's trained in it. Well, guess who the vine dresser is? And he sees things in our church and in our individual lives that we don't see, and he'll begin to deal with us, you need to change this. You need to not allow this voice in your life. You need to go ahead and remove that out of your life. You need to go ahead and adjust over here and make, you need to cut this off, cut this off, cut this off, and cut this off. And our natural mind will go, I don't want to cut that off. And the Lord's saying, no, no, you need to cut it off because I'm taking you somewhere. So after this guy got done cutting our trees, it was like, I mean, that tree was ugly. 
I'm not declaring that for us. All right, so, <laughs> that tree was ugly. But he saw problems that was going to affect the health and the strength of that tree. I wonder if he sees things in our lives. So then he, he trimmed some things out, and uh, uh, then at the base of the tree, he pounded in these big fertilizer sticks that, with a hammer. And then we were to water them for, like, I don't remember how many days. I didn't do it exactly the way I should have. But I did it quite a bit. It was like every day for like 38 days, we were to water them for five minutes apiece. Why? Because he's getting the nutrients into the ground, which then goes into the root system, which then goes up into the tree. Now watch. This is what the Lord said to me. The soil where we are planted contains the moisture and nutrients necessary for the tree to grow to its full capacity. The roots absorb the moisture and the nutrients, which feeds the growth of the tree. Pruning the tree prevents the wasting of moisture and nutrients. If the moisture and the nutrients are going to tree limbs that should have been pruned, the tree then experiences a lack of moisture and nutrients to the proper limbs. The Lord said this to me. This is happening in many believers' lives. Many believers have an overgrowth problem. And they need to allow the father, the vine dresser, to prune them out. This is key to spiritual health and growth, which then transfers to health in our souls and every part of our natural lives. So if I have a li an alive limb in my life that should have been trimmed, and I have another limb next to it that's a little bit bigger, and God designed, or God's desire is that this area of my life increase to a greater capacity of thickness and strength so that it can hold a greater level of fruitfulness, but I look at an alive limb in my life and I go, I don't wanna cut that off, it's alive then what am I doing? I'm actually taking the supply of the spirit, the nutrients of the word and the spirit, the water of the word, and I'm beginning to absorb in, but I can't fulfill what God wants me to fulfill because there's a lack of proper supply because I haven't cut something off. I haven't made the adjustments that God wants me to make. So we are gonna deal with starting next week, the voice of the shepherd and the voice of strangers. This is all gonna launch from John chapter 10. We're gonna deal with the voice of the soul and the flesh. You're gonna love this one. We're gonna deal with the voice of family. How many know there was a point where Jesus was in a place and his family tried to come and take him off God's path? Hello. Families can be so like an ingrown hair. Well, I know what's best for you. Oh, who died and made you God? All right. Anyway, it's going to be fun. The voice of this present world. <laughs> We're going to look at how to determine which voice to follow, developing spiritual sensitivity. Really hearing from God. I just want to share a couple of thoughts here and then we're done. So, Jesus' brothers were jealous of him. We're going to talk about that. That could have, been, that could have led him off in his call, but he only did and said what his father did and said. We know it's recorded in Scripture, right? <clears throat> Jesus looked at Peter and said, you mind the things of men and not of God. And he was his disciple. Are we immune to that? We are not. All right? Paul said, this person, and we're going to look at the scripture, I don't remember his name. He said, he abandoned me for, because he loved this present world. Wow. 
That's a little harsh, Paul. Maybe he just didn't, you know, like the ministry anymore. Maybe you weren't making it fun enough for him, Paul. What what are you saying? This present world has a voice, and it's a stranger voice. Stranger danger. That's just, I mean, I literally, at night one night, it was like, I don't know, even what, I didn't even look at the clock, but in my spirit, I'm hearing the Lord saying these things. And he's going over John chapter 10 with me. The voice of a stranger or the voice of the shepherd? The voice of the stranger, I will not. And actually, it's, the word is plural. It's Strangers. Jesus and his family, we talked about that. Paul was called to the Gentiles, and Peter was called to the Jews. You say, oh, no, it doesn't get this detailed. Oh, it absolutely gets this detailed. You actually can be involved in ministries you're not supposed to be. Paul, in the book of Acts, was forbid by the Holy Spirit to go certain places. But yet we know in Mark 16, it says to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Hmm. I guess we better have a resolution on these scriptures then, huh? What does that mean? That means Paul could have said, well, I'm obeying Mark 16 and gone off and done something and missed the Holy Ghost. And listen to me. He may have had some good growth out of it because God's not going to abandon his word in someone's life just because I'm in disobedience. And you could look at it and go, oh, it's good. It's got growth. It's green. And the Lord's going, you're not supposed to be there. Cut it off and go over to the Gentiles. Ooh, glory. I can tell you're a thinking. I love it. And I'm going to end with this. uh, Is Judy coming or is Joyce coming? Okay. I'm going to end with this. Jesus developed sensitivity, and I think probably the passage we'll use, we'll see, but he developed sensitivity. The scripture says that out of all of Jesus' disciples, he picked the 12, but before he picked the 12, He went to a mountain and he prayed all night. In other words, what? Jesus was so aware of the necessity to pick the right people for the job that he, it was so, it was so important to him, he couldn't let any other voices affect him. I got to get alone with God. And I need to hear from him and him only. Amen. So do you see the importance of this? You know, because we're going to move, we're working together on on a plan to move to two services uh, for here. How many know that God does not want his kingdom to just stop at a level? Right? He wants it to keep growing, right? So things and dynamics of things are going to change, right? But the vision... The message will never change. The methods will, but the message will not. How many love being a part of something that's dying? So if this is to grow, there's not a lot of empty seats in here. We can't put a cap on the growth. Okay, let's take it back. If you're to grow, where are the nutrients and the moisture that's for specific things in your life going to that Lord, the Lord told you to lop off a long time ago? Have you ever done this in your spiritual walk? See, I've done it. This is why, this is, this is why I'm here. And I'm doing things. And I will just say this, the pruning never ends. I was uh, having, uh, having breakfast with Mike a while back and he was talking about 
because he had some landscape background, you actually can cut a limb directions and it'll affect the direction of the growth of that limb. You are the Lord, you're grafted into the vine. You're his, many times, probably nine, probably everybody in here, you're his wild olive shoot. Because you a Gentile, not a Jew by birth. Natural birth, I'm saying. You're grafted in. He chooses where we're fruitful. Well, I just don't see myself that way, Lord. Well, then you need to adjust your vision. Well, we've always done it this way. Uh-oh. Danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> Stranger danger. We've always done it this way? Oh, we won't change the message, but we will adjust to any method that the Lord leads to. Anyone. Come on, you sense that? That just that knowing on the inside. Well, before we go, I want to give people an opportunity to receive Christ. And so unless you have to move around, I ask that you don't. This won't take real long. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're watching online, you can receive Christ right now as well. Where you're at. I just want to share some quick truths with you. Of course, we know from, a, from Scripture that eternity is placed in the heart of every man. We know this, that God loves us and does not want us to perish. Scripture says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. In other words, He's not condemning you. But that the world through Him might be saved. We know that all of people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God because sin causes separation from God. Romans 3.23 declares, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know that heaven is a free gift. You can't earn it or deserve it. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We know this, that God wanted us to be brought back into relationship with Him. Romans 5, 8, and 9 says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. We do not want to go to the place of God's wrath, and God doesn't want us to go there, which is hell. So He sent Jesus to take hell for us, that we might receive heaven instead. We know we receive the gift of forgiveness through faith. This is how you do it. It's through faith, by trusting in Christ. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can place your faith in Jesus and receive God's gift of eternal life right now. If you'd like to receive Jesus, I would like to like you to raise your hand where you're at so I can pray with you. I want to give you that opportunity. If you'd like to receive Jesus this morning, whether you're online or in the room here, please raise your hand right where you're at and we want to pray with you right now to receive Christ. Be bold if you can sense the Lord tugging you in that area. Thank you, Lord. I'll give it just a, just a few more seconds here. Thank you, Lord. Anybody online, Michael? Okay, thank you. And I don't see anybody in the house. That means hopefully we're all saved. Amen. Praise God. It also means there's people out there that need Jesus. Now, you can do this two ways. If you're more comfortable at this point in your life bringing friends that don't know the Lord to hear, I'll preach to them. I'll share Jesus with them. If you're strong in your faith where you're at and you just want to lead people to the Lord wherever you're at, please do it. This isn't the only place that we get people in. God's omnipresent, amen? He's everywhere present, which means you can lead people to the Lord in your living room, at your work, wherever. I've led people to the Lord on the street corner. 
I walked out of Jake's downtown one time on a cold wintry night because we were visiting from Bible college. I walked out of Jake's with Heidi and her sister. And I walked to my car and a drunk stumbled up to me and was asking for money and told me a dirty joke. <laughs> I didn't laugh. Just so you know. I didn't even answer him. I just started preaching the gospel to him right there. I led him to the Lord right there. You want to talk about sobering. He went from wasted to sober just like that. <laughs> I ruined the devil's day. The devil thought, oh, I'm going to have him wander around and cause problems. And here he got saved. <laughs> I love it. But you carry Jesus within you. So you can do it that way as well. Amen. How many have family and friends that aren't saved? Let me ask you this. Are you praying for them? Because you should be praying for them. Believe in God for opportunities. To step out and be a light to them. Amen.